Hi, I'm Christopher Walker with Closely Observed Literature. In this video, I'd like to talk for a few moments about Time's Arrow by Martin Amis. As you can see, this is a, a little, an old charity shop copy of the book. Whew. Where does one start with a book like this? Okay, so uh, the idea of the book is that it charts the life of a man called Todd Friendly. Uh, it begins with his death and then everything goes backwards. So it's not a book, despite its brevity, it's not a book that you could read quickly or easily or that you should read quickly and easily um, because you'd miss a lot for one thing, but also a lot wouldn't make sense. For example, right at the start when he starts to uh, interact with people, the dialogue is written backwards. So good is spelled D-U-G because that's how you'd hear it from the D backwards to the G. Then he says uh, that I understood it and I was able to translate it, but still the dialogues are all presented in reverse chronological order. So the end of a dialogue will come first and then you go back step by step. So you need to keep a little bit extra information in your head as things go back. Now I can't really talk too much about the plot without spoiling it, um, but I can say that this is Amos's Holocaust novel. Now, a lot of writers have Holocaust novels, something that deals with the Holocaust and its repercussions. This is his, uh, but he does it in a very inventive and surprising way. Um, also, beyond that, there's also this aspect of uh, shining a different light on reality, looking at the things that have happened in our past and talking about them in a way that you don't expect and therefore that hits harder. I'm going to read a short passage to give you an example. Um, there are a couple of times in the book where we, we time jump, we, we skip ahead, like they do on some TV series. Like um, I think The Expanse I've been watching recently. It's a great show. Uh, one of the things I love is when they finish one particular storyline, they often then say like six months later and then they they jolt us forwards. Well, here they, he jolts us backwards. So this is uh, nine, page 98. So that's just after the halfway stage. And, um, time passes. Cars are fatter and fewer and imitate animals with their fins and wings. Syringes are no longer disposable. At the hospital, there's generally a greater emphasis on make do and catch as catch can. We even use pipettes. So unhygienic and they've phased out cottonoid, which is a drag. The standing of doctors in society is higher than ever. We walk tall, no longer cowed by writs. You don't see cyclists wearing those do uh, doctor's masks. There are no more warnings on polony days for asthmatics and hay fever sufferers. Everyone smokes and drinks and messes around. No one works out. Last week, they came and took away my color TV. They gave me a black and white one. I made on the deal, but when I switched it on, my first thought was, uh-oh, there goes world opinion. But world opinion as a force went long ago, really. You can't say exactly when it happened. After the moonshot, I remember, a little light went out in everybody's head. Suddenly the world seemed cosier, more local, fuggier. World opinion, on the other hand, disappeared slowly, like dental self-consciousness. You see ogreish smiles all over the place these days. And nobody minds. People don't mind so much what other people are like. So people can be what they are, not minding if others mind. Clothes everywhere become more innocent. Everyone becomes more innocent, constantly forgetting. Central Park is cleaner, but no safer. We are fewer. It's brilliant. So the way that you read it, and you, you have to keep tricking your head into thinking backwards and not forwards. Uh, so you start thinking, wait, wait a second, he's talking about um, world opinion as a force went long ago, really. So that means actually more recently in our own history. So world opinion becomes stronger as you go back. Um, I like this. After the moonshot, I remember a little light went out in everybody's head. In other words, that after the moon landing, something happened to humanity to kind of make us feel a part of a bigger thing. Very, very clever the way it's done. And I like the little thing in there about teeth. That was something of an Amos issue. Didn't he spend 
like $10,000 or something on capping his teeth when he moved to the States. I think there was something like that. I'm pretty sure it was Amos. So there you go, time's arrow. I've lent this book to a couple of friends over the years and each one has brought it back saying, tricky. Some of them didn't finish it, even though, as I mentioned before, it's pretty short. Others said that they found it uh, too gruesome in what it presented. I think it's definitely worth a read. I think it's one of the most important Holocaust novels out there. Um, you know, it belongs in the, um, well, it belongs on your bookshelf, basically. So get a copy. So until next time, thank you. Goodbye.